This is Makespace's brand new embroidery machine. It is a Brother PR680W and it's a lot simpler to use than it looks. I'm going to run you through some of the basics so you can start to use it. So the first thing you need to know is how to power up the machine. We have a kill switch on it for safety reasons that isolates the power. So first of all, we need to make sure it's not the button's not depressed. We're going to press the green button sends power to the machine and then the power switch itself is on the back right corner. Flip that on and we see the screen come to life. The screen's on a swinging arm so we can pull that out, make it a little bit easier to get to and we're going to see a couple of warnings come up before it's ready to go. And there we are. So immediately it's showing a slideshow. We can get rid of the slideshow just by tapping the screen. And it's going to give us our first warning that the machine is about to move. Best thing to do is to stand clear of the needles and when you press the OK button, it will set itself to needle number one if it's not already there. First thing you need to do when you turn on the machine is to give it a drop of oil. It needs this once a day, so it may have already happened by the time you come to it, but if you're in any doubt, just do it anyway. It's not gonna damage the machine. There's only one place you need to put it and it will give you instructions if you need it. But the basic setup is on the screen, you tap on the needle icon and then you tap on the oil icon and it's going to tell you exactly what it's going to do. Press OK and the, there's a hook on the bobbin that has moved around to make space for the oil which you can find in this section down here. The oil is kept in the little box of tools that came with it. It's just this. All you need is a little drop. This machine takes six threads in one go. You can embroider in as many colors as you want. It will intelligently stop when it runs out of colors and ask you to change them. It will even tell you where to put them. For now, we're just going to load up the six colors and program them into the machine so you can see what that looks like. First thing you need to do is set up the needle you want for threading. We're going to work on needle number six because that's where we're missing a spool. So on the screen, I'm going to go to the needle selection. I'm going to select number six. And the machine will set up needle number six for me. I'm then going to set it up for threading by pressing the thread button, which is this one. And that's going to set it up for me. So the spool goes on the spool holder. Make sure you put this little hat on. that one and number three then I'm gonna snap it into the retainer like so I'm gonna do one rotation completely around the tensioner and then follow the line, the guideline on the machine all the way down to the next snap in point. Snap in there. And then we're going to go down and up. Through the hole. back down the same channel we just came up through the next hole I'm going to pause there because quite often the thread gets tangled on the channels we just came in so we just need to check that and make sure all the thread is in the right channels 
before continuing. This is our tool for finishing off the threading. Put the thread around that hook, make sure it's in the retainer, and I'm going to go from right to left, like that, over and above the white plastic bit, pull it down the other side, left to right, and it will cut it off for me. Come back to the control panel, press the thread button, the machine's now threaded itself and it's ready to go. This machine will only take these types of bobbins. They are magnetic core size L pre-wound bobbins. Do not try to put anything else in the machine. This is the bobbin holder. When you have it this way around with the opening, you want to make sure that the, bob, that the, uh, the bobbin thread is wound clockwise. So we're coming off the right hand side. We're going to place that in the housing. And then we find the little slot in there, put it through the slot, and then put it up through the tensioner spring, like so. And that's where it wants to sit. You need about two inches of thread coming off the end. With the bobbin in the housing, we're going to place it on the central pin and push it until it clicks into place. Push the arm back in and close the housing. And that's it. So this machine can take various different sizes of frames depending on the size of the fabric you're using or the size of the garment you're embroidering. These are the frames we have. There are four standard frames and there are extra special ones in the tub which we will not cover here. We'll just use the simple ones. First thing you need to do is set up the arm on the unit to accept the right size frame. There are three thumb screws on the machine. First one on this side. Another one there. And the last one here. Once those are loosened off, then the retaining arm on the left will slide backwards and forwards to allow you to change the size of the frame that it will take. It should also snap into position for each size, but if it doesn't, you can use the frame to adjust it further down the line. The machine does recognize the size you've set it to, so it will be able to tell you once you've set it if it's set for the wrong sized frame for the embroidery you want to do. Once it's done, make sure you tighten up all three thumb screws again. And you're ready to go. To set up your frame, you need the frame itself, you need material, and you need backing. We keep a few different types of stabilizer at Makespace. Uh, the taller white one there is a cutaway stabilizer, the shorter one is a tearaway. The black one is a thinner, something called stick protect. Uh, there's also some muslin on the wall that you could use if you wanted to. General rule of thumb is the thicker the material, the thinner the stabilizer and vice versa. Uh, but it also depends on the types of material that you might be using. If you want to get into some more detail, then have a look in the training material. There's some great tips in there on which ones to use. The four standard rectangular frames all use the same mechanism. They're all a pressure fit. You can adjust the amount of force, uh, hold force by using the thumb screws on each corner. The larger one has a thumb screw on each corner for a bit more finer adjustment. Starting with the outer ring. Backing material goes on top. Then we layer on our material and the main part of the frame, locate the ring with a good amount of pressure, give it a shove until it seats itself fully in the frame. If it won't go in, use the adjustment thumb screw make sure you tighten it up again afterwards. You should be looking for 
enough pressure it feels a bit like a drum skin it should have some resistance there and should not be floppy once your material is mounted on the frame it simply clips into the machine like so Make sure that the pins are located within the recesses on the arms of the frame. So there's a couple of different ways you can get your design into the machine. It has a few options built in, so you can go through, for example, the text options or the design options and pick what the machine has, build something from there. The easiest way is to use a pen drive and the USB ports on the side of the screen. I'm going to go into port 1. Give that a second, and I'm going to select USB 1. From here I can go and find my design. This machine takes files with a .pes file extension. The, uh, the simplest way to get these and to, and to do your own designs is to use Inkscape, and a, a plugin for Inkscape called Inkstitch will give you all the bits you need to configure your design and then save it as a .pes file. So I'm going to select my PS file there for the Makespace logo. It's now showing me a preview of the logo. So I can check at the top here, I can see the sizes of the frames that it will fit in. So I can confirm I'm using the right size frame. And I am because it shows biggest, slightly smaller, middle one, not the smallest one. And I'm using not the smallest one. So we're all good to go on that side. There's nothing I need to do to edit it, but you can do some bits and pieces. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set that design. So I've loaded that one in as the design that I want to use. I can adjust the size slightly. It's up to around 20% larger or smaller you can go with the design. Any more than that, you'll need to redesign it and save it as a new file. I don't need to change the size. You can also rotate it if you want to. Anywhere between 10 degrees, 1 degree, 90 degrees in either direction. You can also move it using the cursors here. You can flip it so you get a mirror image, various different options. Once you're done with it, end the edit. Once you're happy with your editing, then you press embroidery. From this page, you check the actual machine settings. It will try and recognize the colors in the design and match it with the colors of the thread that are programmed into the machine. As you can see, it hasn't got that quite right. So right now the machine thinks it's using spool number one for orange and spool number two for green to embroider the Makespace logo. Here we can see spools one and two are actually white and blue. So we want to change that. And we do that by coming down to this little button here on the screen. We press that one. For number one, we can see that's the, that's the orange. So we want to use spool number five. So I will select spool five. And then for number two, select number two. And for that one, for the green, we want spool number six. Press spool six. That has programmed it. I'm going to press OK. And now we are ready to go with the embroidery. So for safety reasons, the machine is locked. You can't accidentally press the button. It will give you a, an error telling you to unlock the machine to make sure no accidents happen. The needle itself does not move. The frame and the, and the needle mounting will move once it's started. Keep your hands away from that red cross in the middle. In fact, just keep your hands out entirely. There's no reason to put your hands in there unless the machine stops for some reason. So once you're ready to go, unlock the machine. We now have a green button. Press that. And it will now do its thing. While the machine's running, it will stop and start, slow, slow down and speed up as it needs to, and it will also change the threads as it gets to the end of the progression. You can see on the screen, the green crosshair tells you exactly where the needle is hitting, which stitch it's doing. You can see it just moved across there to do a different part. The progress bar below it, below it shows you where exactly within the progress of the, the job as a whole it is. And then the little icon 
on the left shows you which colour it's doing. We have the current stitch, total stitches for the job, elapsed time, total time for the job, and how long this colour will take. If you need to pause the job for whatever reason, you can do that just by pressing the, uh, the start-stop button. That's now paused. You check your bits and pieces. It's, it's handy to be able to do that if it throws a thread and you notice before the machine does. It will notice if it throws a thread and it will stop eventually. And if that does happen, you can skip backwards and forwards by using this button here, which will then give you these. Minus for backwards, plus for forwards. And you can jump forwards and backwards in these stitch counts, so either by 1, 10, 100, or 1,000. And you will see the machine move when you press those buttons. So, for example, if it threw a thread and I needed to jump back by 10 stitches, then I can do that by pressing the button, and that moves. I'll move that forwards 10 stitches, and there we go. Press OK. Once you're ready to go again, same as before, unlock the machine till you get the green light, and press go. If you feel the need, you can adjust the speed using the plus and minus in the bottom right corner. The maximum is a thousand, you can adjust it down if you need to. So once the machine's finished, it will give you a message on the screen to say it's finished embroidering. It will play a little tune and the lights on the machine itself will flash, as you can see. To get the frame off of the machine, you place your, your, your thumbs on top of the the, the tabs on the end here, fingers underneath the frame, lift it up and pull it out. And there we go, our finished job. Once you've finished up, it's a simple case of tidying everything away, removing your job from the frame, put the frame back together, put it away, confirm the finish of the job, slide the screen back, and turn off the machine. And you're done.